Hello and welcome to Middlesex Moments, the radio program and podcast produced by faculty, staff, and students at Middlesex Community College. I'm Stephen Minkler, campus CEO and academic dean, and your host for today's show. As always, Middlesex Moments comes to you from the radio and television studios and the Center for New Media, located on the main campus of Middlesex Community College here in Middletown. And with me today is my guest, Emily Canto, who's a career counselor at the college. How are you today, Emily? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Now, you've been at the college for a number of years. How long have you been here with us? I, I find it hard to believe, but I've been here about 20 years now. Wow, okay. And in the Career Counseling Center, you've got a, a group of colleagues that together you provide services to students who are looking for some advice on what their academic program and what their career aspirations are. And, and, and what kind of services does a student typically find in your office? Um, students can find a, a variety of services from um, kind of career exploration, you know, students who aren't quite sure what they, they may want to major in and or what kind of careers they may want to go into. We all have conversations with them concerning that. We also work with students on transfer advising, helping them identify colleges and universities, not just regionally but nationwide that they may want to transfer to after their time at Middlesex, as well as work with students who are looking for employment either during college for some, you know, part-time jobs and or for employment post-graduation. Okay. And in any student at the college can seek your services. Absolutely. And, okay. We are we're here for all students and, and occasionally for alumni as well. Okay. Now, if I were a student coming to meet with you, what kinds of conversations would you try to help me work through in terms of figuring out what my interests are as a student who is at the college? Okay. Well, as, as I tell students, I, my favorite words in the English language are what, how, come, and, and why. You know, so getting them to think about themselves. What do, you, what do you like to do? What are your experiences? What do you enjoy doing? What do you find fulfilling? What's worthwhile to you as an individual? And then kind of looking at how that may relate to majors and or careers. So a lot of it's conversational. We also do have some online resources. We are fortunate enough to be able to have a subscription to Focus 2, which is a career exploration tool, where students would do a number of inventories that would help them then identify and, and kind of focus in a little bit more, no pun intended, on their, their interests, their abilities, their values, their personality, and how those might relate to the world of work. Okay. And I have to assume this isn't like a one-time conversation you have with a student. Oh, absolutely right. not. You know, if, if my magic wand had dust, we'd be, we'd be looking at that kind of a conversation. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's a process. Mm -hmm. and, and the sooner we can get them engaged in the process um, upon their arrival at the college, the more successful they can be in, in, in kind of best utilizing not only our resources, but the resources that the college has to help them to be better prepared either for transfer or for the world of work. Okay. So a student who's thinking of coming to a college, whether it's Middlesex or, or elsewhere, many students really don't have a defined idea in their mind of what they want to do, what they want to major in. So a student who's really kind of lost in this, what advice might you give them in terms of where they should start kind of matching initial coursework to exploring what might be of interest to them? Well, yeah, that's a very good question. Again, I think sometimes they kind of have to, to look within. What do they enjoy doing? What are things they've had positive feedback on? You know, what are uh, experiences they had in either in high school or in clubs, organizations, individuals with whom they've interact, volunteer work, that they felt good about what they've done and, and they could potentially envision themselves doing. And, and giving themselves that opportunity to explore, to to try one course in, in an area that, that might be a specialty of theirs, as well as kind of matching those to classes that are pretty global. You know, that regardless of, of if they end up in a radiology program or a business program, they're going to need regardless so that they can feel as though they're making forward progress while still giving themselves that chance to do some reality testing in the world of curriculum. Okay. Well, great. We do have to take a quick break. And when we come back, more with Emily Canto, career counselor at Middlesex Community College. This is Middlesex Moments. I'm Steve Minkler. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. This is Steve Minkler, campus CEO and academic dean, um, together with my guest Emily Canto, who's a career counselor here at the college. Before the break, we were talking about some of the services that Emily provides in the Career Development and Counseling Center and, and how she initially s has conversations with students who are looking to explore potential majors and uh, with the goal of eventually finding a career in a field of interest to them. And 
Emily, you were saying that some of those initial conversations are encouraging students to think about experiences that have been successful for them, things that they've liked to do. And I would imagine that there are some students who who can easily find some of that. And what are some examples that you can think of from students you've worked with in the recent past? Okay. Well, how students define success can be kind of interesting. But, you know, there are a lot of times that students, you know, when you start talking with them, have decided they want to go into business. And they may have had experiences in sales through philanthropic things they've done in high school or coursework that they've had or leadership activities they've had in high school and have decided they want to kind of pursue that. Or they, they've always been that student who was you know, kind of the person that all their friends talk to about their problems. And they've, they've kind of decided that they may want to go into human services or social work or psychology or something like that. So that's a really good group to be able to say, you know, let's try the entry level course within that discipline to see if it's what you think it really is. And sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. We have resources that can help students, you know, do some reading to to find out more what other occupations might be related to that kind of a, a major, as well as, you know, we encourage students all the time to do some informational interviewing. You know, talk to folks who are in the jobs and careers that they think they may want to be in and to talk to multiple people because, there, as you know, there are people who love what they do and people who think it's okay what they do. Mm-hmm. And, and, and getting them to get that kind of balanced view from a number of people is helpful. And that can be kind of intimidating, but we can kind of coach them through that. You know, often there are times there are students who have absolutely no idea. Mm-hmm. And, and I think getting folks to, to find some level of saying, and that's okay. Like, that's why you're in college, and that's why you're here to learn more about what else is out in the, in the real world. But, but that can be kind of frightening and, and, and kind, of, kind of helping them realize that we understand that. We understand that as an institution and that we're here to kind of help you navigate through what you need to navigate through to, to, to get a better sense of you and what's out there. Right. And some of your conversations, I think, must have taken on the flavor of tempering expectations, maybe. Sometimes a student might think, uh, I I think we've both heard this from students who come in saying, well, my family wants me to be a nurse, Mm -hmm. but I have to take math to make this work, um, or I have to take science. So how might you have a conversation with a student whose expectation may not match what you're hearing from them about what they like and what they might be good at doing? Well, I think sometimes you have to help those students get either at the root you know, of why you thought you wanted to do healthcare, or, you know, is it because you wanted to go, you want to help people? And then it's kind of saying, all right, so let's, let's maybe broaden that definition of what helping is. Does it have to be in, in healthcare if, if science isn't your strong suit? And, and, and we deal in the reality of your, your, you know, you may very well not be admitted to that kind of a program. So in what other ways might you define helping people? Or conversely, in what other ways might you be able to be in a medical environment if that's the environment that you were hoping for? I could I could think of a friend of mine years ago who, you know, he wanted to be a doctor and, you know, he couldn't pass Gen Bio, right? So so we, we kind of talked about what his assets were and they were in math. And he's the director of accounting in a, in a major hospital in, in, in this greater region. So he's involved in the environment in which he felt he wanted to be in, but using his, his talents and assets. Mm-hmm. And that can, be, that can be, no pun intended, a bitter pill for a student to kind of swallow is this is always what I thought or what everyone wants me to be. And then kind of saying sometimes life's about plan B. And, and sometimes we have to explore that and deal with the reality. And I think that's um, some of the pressure we feel as a community college is being an institution where we really help students quickly get into careers, but there's lots of times where it's not going to happen as quickly as Mm -hmm. the students may feel or the college may feel or maybe employers want. But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it really is the a matter of the best match between a student, the curriculum at the college, and, and where they might go with work or w- with a career later in life. And and one of the beautiful things, and I and I mean that sincerely about being a community college, is you you have that opportunity if you're in a career program to get those fundamental skills that employers are looking for, and they know when they're looking at a community college student that they come to them with with x number of abilities to be able to be successful and and that's what the expectation is and i think for students and and most of our students do come here with the expectation of transfer and and if we can can get you to the place where you kind of know the 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 general field those other decisions are going to come much more quickly to you when you have that opportunity to be in a bachelor's level environment and and have higher level division courses 
and have skills that are on a higher level to bring to internships that are more junior, senior level oriented. And and getting folks to feel that that's okay is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. But I think really that that one-on-one communication that we're fortunate enough as a small institution to be able to have in our office as well as, you know, faculty have with their students. You want to be a history major and that's great. And oh my gosh, what am I going to do with a history degree? And then say, you know what, you have that opportunity to look at the skills you're going to develop. And those are going to be analytical and research and writing and curiosity of knowledge. And there are a multitude of ways in, in, in the pragmatic world that those are going to be marketable to an employer. So when you're talking to a student about transfer opportunities mm-hmm. and a student may have an idea of where they might wish to transfer to, uh, what kinds of things should a student bring to the conversation to help you get the information you need to help them make the right choice for them? I think they need to be realistic about how far they're willing to go geographically. I think they need to be realistic about the competitive nature of an institution they feel comfortable with. I mean, as a commuter school, you know, many of our students kind of still want that experience of being able to be home by the end of the day. And and, and that's going to obviously limit the number of institutions you can look at. The more opportunities you give yourself to potentially explore, that's great. But if you know in your heart of hearts that you need and want to be home, you know, even if you do decide you want to, you know, live away from home within two to three hours, then that's setting a realistic expectation. You know, if you're an A student, you may get that kind of scholarship money to be able to to look at a private college. But it's, it's really giving yourself that opportunity to fly and explore things you might not necessarily have considered from high school while still being realistic about you and your life and how intact you need it to be in this region that we live in or if you're ready to explore other areas. Yeah. Well, and, and it's also equally important that the, the school that the student wants to transfer to has the program that they want <laughs> and, and how has Middlesex Community College prepared them academically for transferring in terms of keeping the number of credits that they've earned with Middlesex as well as, as you said earlier, ensuring that they're going to get the next steps in that field of study. You know, again, that, that's why, you know, I, I, I try to get out to as many first semester English classes as I possibly can to kind of let folks know we exist because it's much easier to err on the side of conservative and assisting students in selecting courses for transfer if we start looking earlier rather than later. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you don't have to know where you want to go necessarily. But if we can kind of say these these are global courses that are going to go to the vast majority of institutions, not only in the state but but nationwide, it's easier to make those selections and start exploring what's out there and what schools you might feel comfortable in as well as your major without letting yourself get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And we do try to make that somewhat easier here at Middlesex Community College through these new TAP transfer pathways with the state universities, but also articulation agreements we have with other Mm -hmm. colleges as well. So how do we get that information out to students about the agreements that we have that help them move from associate's degree to bachelor's degree level? Well, I mean, the the folks in our office are are pretty well versed on what articulation agreements we may have with other colleges and universities outside of the CSU, Central, Southern, Eastern, and Western, through whom we have a pretty extensive what we call TAP, Transfer Articulation Program, to those institutions in in a wide array of majors. And in, in knowing that, I think that makes transfer much easier for students, but for folks who aren't quite sure if they may want to go to Florida, we also err on the side of conservative with students in looking at those courses that they take for TAP. So that, you know, an, an arts course is an arts course at Central and is an arts course at UConn and UHeart as well as UTampa. So that, you know, it's all about allowing yourself to have as many viable options as you can. And, okay. and that's kind of what we, we strive to do. Okay, great. Well, time for another short break. And when we come back more with Emily Canto, career counselor here at Middlesex Community College, this is Steve Minkler. You're listening to Middlesex Moments. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. This is Steve Minkler, together with my guest, Emily Canto, and Emily is a career counselor here at Middlesex Community College. We've been talking about um, Emily's role in assisting students with aligning their academic interests with perhaps what their career interests are, and so we've talked mostly from the student side of things, and and Emily, how do... 
how do we as a college, how do, how do you as a career counselor stay in touch with what it is that the employers are looking for? What kind, what kind of skills and interests are important to employers today? Okay, well, we, we interact pretty regularly with, with regional employers who are looking to hire our students either for part-time or full-time employment. And, and, and in working with my colleagues here in the academic programs, what we try to do is there's, let me back up for a second, there's this national organization called NACE, National Association of Colleges and Employers, through whom I have a membership. And, and they surveyed probably about a year back um, thousands of employers and said, really, what skills are you looking for in graduates? And, and some of those top skills were oral and written communication skills, the ability to work as part of a team, you know, global thinking, leadership, um, professional ethics, and, and, and those types of skills. And, and, and unfortunately, um, they said, you know, sometimes graduates are, are lacking in those. So, so what we've been trying to do, and, and we are, are myself and a, and a small group of faculty, have been looking at ways to ensure that our students are mindful that they are getting these skills in their courses. And they truly are. Every time a student has a project in a class, they're learning those problem-solving skills. They're learning how to serve as part of a team. They're getting that leadership ability because they're having to present those projects that they've been working on in front of a group of individuals. And, and to that end, for the last couple of semesters, this, this group and I have worked with students and done presentations on, you know, how do you present a professional image is, is the, the topic we're tackling for this current semester where four or five faculty are building in their curriculum kind of competitions for students in, you know, how do you best present yourself? And, and they're going to have students do that in class, both both in a, in a physical kind of professional attire, as well as being mindful of how they, they interact with those around them. And the expectation is we're going to have a larger event for the entire college at the end. Last semester, we worked on how, you know, how do you best interact with your faculty? Like, what's the appropriate way to act in a classroom? And we did it through kind of an, an entertaining skit situation. But students really got the message of, of what, what is professional? How do, you, how do you present yourself in a way that employers are going to take you seriously and know that you're there to work and be productive for their organization. And it was it was very well attended. As we go forward, it is it is our hope to get students and faculty to, to kind of be on that same page and say, you know, this is 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 why we do some of these things in class. So that you, as you go forward in the world of work, can present to an employer those skills and abilities that they're looking for that are just crucial for success in the world of work. And I think it's important, too, that many of our academic programs have advisory boards, which include employers who are mm -hmm. telling us directly about some of the things you were just mentioning, but also the technical skills that a student might need in radiology or communications or um, human services, whatever program the student's interested in. So I think it's important that we hear from them as well as having some of this national data that you're talking about. Oh, absolutely. And the vast majority of our career-oriented programs have either internships or practicums incorporated in them so that as students go through the program, they not only have resume and mole information, you know, experience to put in that resume to make them marketable, but also are able to do that reality testing and, and network and do all of those things that, that people need to do to be successful when an associate degree is, is kind of the terminal degree they're looking at to enter into the world of work. Mm -hmm. So one way that you help tie this together for students who are still in that exploration stage is an event that you help host every fall together with Dr. Kim Thomas, who's a professor of chemistry. And um, if you can tell our listeners more about this particular event that happens oh, sure. in October. Sure. Dr. Thomas and I have done this probably for five or six years now, host an event called What Can I Do With a Major In? where we have faculty from almost every discipline at the college available to talk to students about if I majored in biology, environmental science, pretty much every you know major that we have at the school, what career options might I be able to explore with that degree? And they're able to have a very casual conversation with faculty as well as gain information on a lot of different opportunities that there are. So so what are the nuances between doing a psych major and a sociology major and what doors might be open to me? 
And it, it's probably one of the better attended events on campus that really allows students to explore and talk to folks without having to search people out during faculty office hours and, and feel intimidated. Is it really okay to do this? And and we try to do everything we can to make it one of those, those events that students could just kind of feel comfortable and talk to people and gather information. And, and we intentionally do it two weeks before students select their courses for the next semester so that they can, they can get a little bit better sense about what, what courses they may want to take, what they might want to test the waters with, or, or schedule a follow-up appointment with that professor um, to have a more formalized conversation down the road. Well, I think your uh, the event itself has an actually a particular flavor to it. It's not just a bunch of talking heads at the front of a room. Right. Right. It's 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 conversations one on one. You at know. tables, though, so people yep. have. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. It's it's almost like it's a, a fair. A fair. Yeah. 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 It it it's set up with a fair with right. popcorn and, and fun stuff as as well as some faculty who have like the ophthalmic design people bring their eyeglasses and the vet tech program bring some of their equipment so it's 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 hands-on as well manufacturing brings tools and equipment that people can see feel touch to to make it more real and, and there is a table decorating contest that we do have just to you know be transparent that is, about that, that is true right. we do try to have fun with our faculty <laughs> yeah. here as well well, I think one of the neat things is it does help students who are still exploring what major they would like to pick here at Middlesex. But it also, this past year, we opened it up and had a the same day, same event, but at a later hour for high school students and their families. And I understand that was fairly well attended this year. Yes, we had a number of families come through and, and, and get that opportunity to, again, that one-on-one conversation that, that a small school provides you with that opportunity to have. And it was just kind of a natural link. Mm-hmm. So I guess we can invite the listeners to look forward to this next October here at Middlesex, the What Can I Do with a Major in FAIR. Absolutely. So we've talked a lot about career planning, putting that together with an academic major, and you know, helping students plot out their future. So I have to ask, how did you get interested in this field yourself? Well, it started out because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. (laughs) I thought forever I wanted to be a social worker. And I was very fortunate as a, a sophomore in college. So, so like many of our students, I had that opportunity to do some volunteer work, internship, and found out pretty quickly social work was not the right field for me. Mm-hmm. And, and it was probably one of the best lessons I learned because then I took the chance as a, a senior in college to, to work with our counseling center doing, you know, as, as strange as it may sound, working with students who were going to be dismissed from college that were peers of mine and helping them kind of figure out what they might want to do next. And, and I found that was really cool. So, so that was, you know, always the kind of guidance, counselor, what way do I want to go? And life just kind of brought me through residential life to eventually getting to career development and counseling. And, and I, I say to people all the time, and, I, I, and I'm a very honest person and upfront, that I love what I do. And I am very fortunate to work with students who are clear about what they want to do. I am fortunate to work with students who have absolutely no idea what they want to do, as well as adults who decide, you know what, now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for me to come to college, and I'm scared, and and I can cheerlead you on. And, and, And I'm really fortunate to do that. So, so yeah, now, now I'm, I'm looking at what's, what's next and starting to do a little bit of teaching. And, and I think, you know, getting folks to say you learn and you grow and you change and, and life will get you places because it does happen. And, and sometimes you got to let the path lead you where you need to go. Right. Yeah. So you yourself can sit as an example for many students who, like you, weren't quite sure what they wanted, but they did know that they, in your case, wanted to help people. And it, it kind of worked out to what you're doing today. Uh, one of the ways that you're trying to be a little more involved in, and to kind of speak to your natural teaching role is a course we offer for first semester students. And that covers some of what you, we've talked about today. And, and that's a great opportunity for first year students to get acclimated to college and start to think about services like those provided in the Career Development and Counseling Center at Middlesex. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a course called, you know, College Experience, First Year Experience. It may be a freshman seminar, depending on the college or university um, that an individual attends. But it's, it's very career-oriented. It, it, it teaches folks how to do goal setting, kind of how to transition from high school or no school into college, as well as has, you know, a pretty hefty section on 
career exploration and getting you to learn about you and, 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 and how do you plan next steps and how do you get ready to do a job search and, and yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a very helpful life skills kind of course mm -hmm. um, for students to take and it's, and it's, it's kind of fun. Right. Well, it's all part of the array of services and courses we offer here for all students at Middlesex Community College to get them to succeed in whatever it is that they set out to do. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I want to thank you, Emily Canto, a career counselor in the Career Development and Counseling Center, for joining me today. Thanks for, for being with me. Well, thank you for having me. Okay. And we want to thank you, our listeners, for joining us for another edition of Middlesex Moments. As always, you're welcome to visit us in person at our main campus, located at 100 Training Hill Road in Middletown, or at our Meriden Center at Platt High School, 220 Co. Avenue, where we offer afternoon and evening classes four days a week. And, of course, you can visit us online 24-7 at mxcc.edu. So for everyone here at Middlesex Community College, I'm Stephen Minkler. We hope to see you again soon.